Welcome everyone to 0.25, the series where I present to you some cool details and movie mistakes you likely missed while watching the Transformers movies. Today I watched Transformers Dark of the Moon at 0.25 speed, and I found 25 juicy new details that you likely missed while watching the film. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Number 1. When Sentinel Prime betrays the Autobots by shooting Ironhide in the back, he goes in for one last blow to finish off the job. But if you look closely, Ironhide tried to push Sentinel's rust cannon away, with him ever so slightly moving it to the right. But due to the injuries he sustained, he wasn't quick enough to divert the shot. Number 2. When Zimmerman lands on Shockwave to shoot a grenade into his neck, the parachute that he had disappears when he takes the shot. This mistake is more clearly seen when Shockwave knocks Zimmerman off of him. As we can see, no parachute is attached. However, in the next shot when Zimmerman lands on the taxi, the parachute is reconnected. Number 3. When the Dreads are chasing after the Autobots down the highway, Bumblebee and Sideswipe go into their stealth modes to prevent the Dreads from causing more havoc. And this is where the mistake lies. Despite Sideswipe being a roadster, when he goes into stealth mode, somehow he gets his roof back. This should technically be impossible since the roof on the prop car was removed to transform the vehicle into a roadster. The reason why this likely happened was because they used the concept art instead of the final design to create his Stealth Force model. Interestingly enough, the Dark of the Moon tie-in video game would fix this mistake. Number 4. When the Navy SEALs enter a war-torn Chicago, one of them has a special card attached to their uniform. That would be a Killshot card of Megatron sporting his 2007 design. A cool detail about this card is that it references what Lennox said in the 07 film. Remember, aim low, armor's weak under the chest. Along with foreshadowing what Lennox would say to the SEALs. Alright, you're gonna need your 40 mic mics and your frag. Go full auto. The vibrations jack up their circuits. What makes this card even cooler is that you can buy it off of Amazon for the hefty price of $250. Number 5. When the Autobots take out an illegal nuclear weapons site in the Middle East, Mirage, also known as Dino, transforms, causing a soldier to fall back. But if you slow this scene down frame by frame, we can see that he actually smacks the soldier in the head, causing a good chunk of blood to come out. Somehow he would survive since we see him crawling backwards under Dino. Number 6. When Barricade shoves Wheeljack, also known as Q, to be executed, in the background we can see a cardboard cutout of Dino's head. These cardboard cutouts assist the actors when they are in a scene with the robots, helping them know where to look. It baffles me how the crew forgot to put this prop away, and more so of how they did not notice it in the final cut. Number 7. When the Autobots roll out and race through Chicago, for a split second we can briefly see the camera car trailing behind Wheeljack. Number 8. When Carly walks up the stairs, we can see that she has a baseball cap on, but when she makes it to the top to greet Sam, the cap is gone. Number 9. When Brains and Wheelie were watching Star Trek, Wheelie says a line that foreshadows the big twist of the movie. Yo, Brains, what's up? Doing good. Ah, shit, I seen this one. This is the one where Spock goes nuts. If you don't already know, Leonard Nimoy is the actor who played Spock, and he's also the voice actor of Sentinel Prime. Interestingly enough, Nimoy is related to Michael Bay, since he married Susan Bay, who is Michael's cousin. This is why there's a lot of Star Trek references throughout the film. How doomed you are, Autobots. You simply fail to understand that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Were I to invoke logic, logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Number 10. When Sam is at NASA, behind him we can see a jet that has the call sign of N4500X. This is an easter egg that references Blackout's call sign in Transformers 2007, which was 4500X. But what makes this jet even cooler is that it was Michael Bay's private jet during the production of Transformers Dark of the Moon. Number 11. When Sentinel jumps down to confront Optimus, Optimus shoves Shockwave's corpse away. But if you watch this scene frame by frame, we can see that Shockwave's head is fully fixed. This is a mistake since when Optimus kills Shockwave, he destroyed his entire head and pulled out his eye. But here we can see that his eye is back in place, and his head is in one piece. Number 12. After Optimus scares off Shockwave and his pet driller at Chernobyl, Lennox asks Prime what Decepticon they just fought. But when Optimus replies, the animators forgot to animate his lips. That 
is shockwave is shockwave is shockwave number 13 when wheeljack is executed by barricade we can see a red crane with a white cockpit in the background this crane has the exact same design as the ones that were in the area optimus got stuck now you could say that this is just a coincidence and that this crane wasn't part of the ones in prime's area but you have to keep in mind that these cranes here are purely made up of cgi meaning that the animators deliberately placed this crane here. And since these cranes don't show up anywhere else in the film, it's safe to say that this one here was part of the fleet where Optimus was at. Number 14. When Starscream attacks the Ospreys, the soldiers were forced to bail out by wingsuiting. If you look closely during this shot, we can see the stun actors jumping off of this building. And if you did not already know, the majority of the wingsuiting scenes in Dark of the Moon were done by real professionals and not CGI. Number 15. During the scene where Shockwave orders the Driller to attack the building, Sam and the gang grabbed onto anything that they could so they wouldn't fall out. However, Stone wasn't so lucky and plummeted to his death. But this would be retconned a scene later since we see him behind Sam and Carly. In addition to him being in several other subsequent scenes of the film, he would appear for the last time at the end of the movie behind Sam and Carly. Number 16. During the scene where the Nest soldiers apprehend Brains and Wheelie, you may think that Brains is the only one who has a gun. However, if you look closely, we can see that Wheelie has a gun as well. But it's very hard to see due to it being covered up by the shadow of one of the Nest soldiers. Number 17. During the scene where Sam is attached to Starscream, Sam gets tossed into a dry cleaning store. Now, in the store, we can see a sign that says all work is done on premises. In a later shot when Sam activates the boomstick, he knocks over a table. Then it cuts to the soldiers fighting off Starscream. They get the upper hand causing Screamer to smash his head into the store. But if you look closely, the wall is now made up of bricks instead of being painted. The table is standing up again. And the all work is done on premises sign is moved to the left. Number 18. When Dylan calls Sam on the phone, we can see that the area code is 202, which if you didn't know is the area code for Washington DC, which is the city where Sam lives. Number 19. During the bar fight scene, Dutch disarms the bartender by smacking her in the head and tossing her to the side. When using her shotgun to keep another employee at bay, in the background we can see the bartender wiping off a bloody nose. Number 20. During the Mexican standoff. After Ironhide throws a boomstick into Crankcase's face, he drops him onto a red car before he kicks him into a auto shop. But if you look closely, the car's windshield is already dented before Crankcase lands on it, while in the previous scene it wasn't. Number 21. After Sentinel Prime steals the pillars from Nest, he drives off with them attached to his roof. But during this scene, if you look very closely, we can see the camera, the film crew attached on top of the truck, which would be used to capture the point of view shot of the cargo on top of Sentinel. Number 22. During the scene where Judy and Ron Witwicky unexpectedly show up at Sam's house, we can see that a car is behind their RV. But when they offer Sam a ride due to his car not starting up, the car behind the RV is now on a trailer. Number 23. During the scene where the Autobots are fighting off Sentinel Prime, Bumblebee takes a shot at Sentinel. But if you look closely, his cannon is missing. But in the shot after, his cannon is back. Another weird thing in this scene is that part of the top of Bumblebee's head is silver. And this goof continues into the next shot. As for why this happened is unknown. Number 24. During the scene where Bruce tries to fight Bumblebee, we can see that B is this close to Bruce. But when we get a focus shot on Simmons, the animators forgot to add Bumblebee back into the background, exposing all the posters he was previously covering up. And lastly, number 25. During the freeway chase scene, Dino hooks on to Hatchet and kills him by throwing him into oncoming traffic. But if you look closely when Hatchet gets killed, the guardrail has these spikes on it. However, when Dino threw him, it didn't. On top of that, we can see that there's an open field when Dino throws Hatchet. But when Hatchet lands, we can clearly see a train yard behind him. That's because of the backdrop for where Hatchet gets killed is reused footage from Michael Bay's other movie, The Island. 
This isn't the only reused footage during this chase scene, however. When we see the cars getting flipped, that's also reused footage from the island. Now, though you may think this was done due to Michael Bay being lazy, that's actually not the case. During the filming of this scene, Gabriela Cedillo was working as an extra in one of the cars in this scene, when a cable pulling another vehicle snapped. It smashed through the windshield of the car she was driving, leaving her with permanent brain damage. Her family would later win a lawsuit with Paramount for $18 million one year after the accident. Though this is not 100% confirmed to be the reason for the reused footage, since it's never been publicly stated to be the case, I believe it was done out of respect for Gabriella. And just like that, that was 25 details that you likely missed while watching Transformers Dark of the Moon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you would like to see some more, consider dropping a like rating because it does help my channel a lot. I do content like this all the time, so feel free to give my channel a look around when you get the chance. Now before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It truly means a lot and it helps keep my channel running. So a big fat thank you to you guys. And with that said, hit that outro.